They are silent sentinels. They look and listen from the cold reaches of space. They capture signals and images critical to America's intelligence community, warfighters, and policymakers. They reveal threats to the homeland, provide battlefield situational awareness, support counter narcotics, survey the damage from natural disasters, and much more. They are the satellites of the National Reconnaissance Office, America's eyes and ears in space. Japan's attack on American forces at Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, demonstrated the critical importance of reconnaissance to prevent surprise attacks on the United States and its allies. The American people in their righteous might. After World War II, the Soviet Union became America's principal national security threat as a new and potentially more dangerous Cold War emerged. Moscow tested its first atomic device in 1949, and in the 1950s, moved steadily toward acquiring first heavy bombers and then long-range missiles as strategic delivery systems. War with the Soviet Union was a growing possibility, and America looked to intelligence agencies for indications and warnings of surprise attack. Using traditional spy craft, which relied on human agents to gather strategic intelligence behind the Iron Curtain was extremely difficult due to tight Soviet counterintelligence and the closed nature of Soviet society. To offset this lack of human source intelligence, in the early 1950s, the United States conducted aerial surveillance on the periphery of and over the Soviet Union and other denied territories using low-altitude planes, modified for reconnaissance purposes. However, these planes became increasingly vulnerable to enemy fighters and surface-to-air missiles. In November 1954, President Dwight Eisenhower directed the Central Intelligence Agency to begin developing the U-2 reconnaissance plane under a project codenamed Aquatone. The U-2, first flown over the Soviet Union on July 4, 1956, used sophisticated cameras to capture images from an altitude in excess of 70,000 feet, presumably beyond the reach of anti-aircraft weapons. But on May 1, 1960, the Soviets shot down a U-2 piloted by Francis Gary Powers. The shootdown and Powers trial deeply embarrassed the United States and prompted President Eisenhower to suspend all future flights over the Soviet Union. The United States needed to find a safer and better method of monitoring potential adversaries. The use of unmanned high-altitude balloons equipped with cameras was crude and unreliable. The CIA's A-12 and its Air Force version, the SR-71 Blackbird, both advanced reconnaissance aircraft that could fly higher and faster than the U-2 would not be operational until the mid-1960s. The United States looked to space for the answers to its reconnaissance needs. America had been experimenting with space-based reconnaissance since the mid-1950s. In August 1959, President Eisenhower authorized the Naval Research Laboratory to develop the Galactic Radiation and Background Experiment, or GRAB satellite, to collect Soviet air defense radar emissions. Ten months later, on June 22, 1960, a rocket carrying GRAB-1, America's first signals intelligence satellite, lifted off from Cape Canaveral, Florida. The GRAB program operated until 1962 when it was replaced by the Poppy Signals Intelligence Satellite, which operated until 1977. On August 10, 1960, a few weeks after America orbited GRAB-1, the United States launched the first successful Corona Imagery Intelligence Satellite. Corona took pictures of denied territories and then returned the exposed film to Earth in capsules ejected from the spacecraft, which Air Force planes recovered in mid-air over the Pacific Ocean. Corona operated until 1972. 
Its imagery showed that U.S. intelligence had overestimated the number of Soviet missiles and other military capabilities. While the bomber gap and missile gap debates continued off and on in the public, within cleared circles, there was no doubt that the United States maintained a clear superiority in weapons capabilities. After the success of the U-2, Grab, and Corona, the United States established clearer lines of authority to manage America's growing and increasingly diffuse reconnaissance program. On August 31, 1960, Secretary of the Air Force Dudley Sharp, on orders from President Eisenhower, established the Office of Missile and Satellite Systems to direct the Air Force Satellite Reconnaissance Program. A little over a year later, on September 6, 1961, Acting Director of Central Intelligence General Charles Cable and Deputy Secretary of Defense Roswell Gilpatrick officially established the management arrangements for the National Reconnaissance Program, which consolidated space and aerial reconnaissance projects under a covert National Reconnaissance Office that combined the expertise of the intelligence community, Department of Defense, and private industry. Dr. Joseph Cherick, Undersecretary of the Air Force and Director of the Office of Missile and Satellite Systems, and Richard Bissell, CIA Deputy Director of Plans, led the newly formed NRO. From 1961 to 1992, NRO managed America's reconnaissance program in secrecy. During this period, the NRO pioneered increasingly sophisticated collection systems as demand for satellite reconnaissance grew. The KH-7 and KH-9 film return systems provided imagery of Soviet and Chinese nuclear installations, ICBM sites, and other activities in denied areas. Between the first KH-7 mission in 1963 and the end of the KH-9 program in 1986, these systems returned over 91,000 linear feet of film. But deorbiting capsules Developing the film and examining the images took weeks. America needed a faster method of gaining intelligence from space. On December 19, 1976, NRO launched the KH-11 Near Real-Time Electro-Optical Satellite, which transmitted data to Earth via a relay satellite instead of using film. The KH-11 and other NRO systems contributed to the verification of arms control treaties, global transparency, and the Cold War's end in 1989. Today, the U.S. government openly acknowledges the NRO, and a variety of users depend on the enormous amount of data NRO satellites collect. Quickly and reliably delivering the information to all 16 intelligence community agencies, the five military branches, and various civil users and U.S. allies is a critical NRO mission. To do this, NRO, from its headquarters in Chantilly, Virginia, builds, operates, and maintains a high-speed global information system of satellites and ground-based communications. The NRO also maintains ground stations at Buckley Air Force Base, Colorado, Fort Belvoir, Virginia, and White Sands Missile Range, New Mexico, and has a presence at the Joint Defense Facility, Pine Gap, Australia, and the Royal Air Force Base, Menwith Hill Station in the United Kingdom. To meet the new threats from the War on Terror, NRO, in collaboration with the National Security Agency, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, and other organizations is developing innovative reconnaissance methods to confront lower signature, more agile targets, and provide critical data to users around the world in near real time. The NRO cadre of expert liaison officers and field representatives help NRO partners and customers glean the most out of its data and applications. In battle zones, NRO provides tools such as sensor to shooter, which places NRO satellite imagery into plane cockpits. 
This helps pilots see targets before they engage them, increasing strike precision and minimizing collateral damage. Another system, called Eagle Vision, combines NRO and commercial imagery. The Threat Human Intelligence Reporting Evaluation Analysis and Display System, or THREADS, correlates human intelligence with signals and imagery intelligence provided by NRO systems. NRO systems can enable soldiers in a combat theater to identify, locate, and track hostile forces or suppress enemy air defenses. In Iraq, Afghanistan, and other troubled areas around the world, NRO is helping U.S. troops locate terrorists, find their weapons, and detect other threats. The impact of NRO innovation goes beyond military and intelligence needs. NRO-inspired technology has contributed to medical imaging, global communications, environmental protection, meteorology, and much more. Today, the United States is preeminent in satellite reconnaissance. The NRO enlists the expertise of highly skilled engineers from across government and industry to maintain this edge in space, the ultimate high ground from which to watch, listen, and learn. Always vigilant, NRO's eyes and ears give America's policymakers, intelligence analysts, warfighters, and homeland security specialists the critical information they need to keep America safe, secure, and free.